So this pursuit of truth is there. The documentary aspect of photography, we don't turn our back on it. A desire to make the narrative live is still there. It's how we look at it and how we see it. And those potential media markets do affect it. Susan Sontag once said, instead of just recording reality, photographs have become the norm of the way things appear to us, thereby changing the very idea of reality and of realism. To photograph a thing is to appropriate the thing photographed. And if we've appropriated it, by extension, what do we do with it? A simple handshake. We crop that down and we see it this way. Is it gesture of friendship? Is it two guys comparing hand size? Well, in the case of this recent photograph, I'm not sure. But, nonetheless, there it is. Reality in front of your face, but perhaps something more. The point is, the camera's everywhere. It looks at everybody and everything. It has documented things like political assassinations, public deaths. It has examined things like demonstrations and riots. And of course, incidents like Kent State. Or assassination of a Viet Cong that Eddie Adams took in Vietnam. It has that capacity to show drama, to show death, to show war, to show incidents from human life, sometimes very ugly ones, but it has that quality. It even has a depth to it beyond it. These are people that were arrested by the government of Cambodia in the 60s and then disappeared. And all we have left is the fact that before they took them out and did whatever they did to them, they took their picture. So their pictures live on long after them in a testament that is very different probably from the original intention of just documenting a face. You see it in street photographs. You see it in news photographs. And you see it in photographs of the everyday. And some of them are quite comic and quite ironic. That's life in the 20th century. They may reflect more upon the way we grow and the way we shape our lives than we know. But they also have that power, and that shouldn't be turned back and looked on. If you look at something like Gene Smith's work in Minamata, which was a fishing village in Japan that suffered from mercury poisoning due to industry pumping its uh, vile stuff into the ocean. And it had a profound effect upon the village. And Smith was there when the protesters from the village and the news media confronted the, the director of the corporation. And he was able to show the profound effect that all that had on it. Is this just gritty photographs documenting reality? Is it showing us what the ugly nature of pollution can be? And yet at the same time he took these pictures, Gene Smith also took one of the most beautiful pictures of something as tragic as this, a mother tending to her deformed child. They live on in many ways even beyond their power. We continue to see that documented in wars and disasters around the world. It will always be there. The camera has that potential to reflect the people who live and who die. Sometimes tragically so. In much the same way that, that, that uh, <clears throat> we see it worked in day-to-day -day work, we also see it done in combination imagery too. In the early days, they tried combination printing. This particular print reflects a, a portrait of five different front forward faces from five different nationalities in the world to make one sort of universal face. Time tried the same thing with the special issue on the face of America. 
combining the look of several mixed race, races and genders into one composite photograph as a representation proportionately of the multicultural world that they were trying to reflect. <laughs>